Hey there, Reddit crew. Let me tell you about the nightmare that was last year. So picture this. My sister, the one I grew up with and trusted, turned into a real opportunist. She saw a chance and took it, even if it meant dragging me down with her false testimony. Her false words had some serious consequences. I lost custody of my precious kids to my husband. It was bad and I felt like my whole world had come crashing down. On top of that, I ended up getting arrested. Yeah, the whole situation was a mess to say the least. What made it even worse was finding out that my ex-husband was behind this wicked plot. He must have promised my sister something, money, favours, who knows. It felt like a double betrayal, one from my sister and the other from him. And now she's back because life hasn't been what she hoped it to be. Let me give some background. My ex-husband was not just any regular guy. He was filthy rich and an expert at weaving lies. But guess what? He couldn't fool me forever. He acted like Mr. Perfect on the surface, but behind closed doors, he was a lying cheater. Can you imagine how it felt to discover his infidelity? My heart shattered into a million pieces and the pain was unbearable. But it didn't stop there. When I confronted him about his cheating ways, he went full-on gaslight mode. Oh, the manipulation was out of this world. He tried to make me believe I was crazy for even thinking he'd do such a thing. Let me give you a glimpse of his wicked tactics. He'd delete texts, lie about his whereabouts, and even blame me for his deceitful actions. He made me question my sanity, and it was like living in a twisted psychological thriller. When I finally mustered the courage to ask for a divorce, he flat out refused at first. Can you believe the audacity? He thought he could continue playing his games and control me forever. But guess what? I wasn't having any of it. He soon realized I was serious about breaking free from his toxic grasp, and that's when he pulled out all the stops. He tried to portray me as the crazy one, hoping to discredit me and make everyone doubt my side of the story. Amidst the divorce proceedings, my ex-husband was on a mission to prove I was the crazy one and that he was as innocent as a newborn puppy. Let me tell you, I wasn't buying his act anymore. One day, tensions were running high and he decided to pay me a visit at my place. I was living with my sister back then, only if I knew how he would betray me. It turned out into a heated confrontation with him blaming me for everything. Painting me as a terrible wife, it was hurtful and deeply distressing. He said things I'd never forget. You destroyed our marriage with your crazy tactics. It's all your fault. I can't believe I ever married someone like you. You're so unstable and irrational. You've always been the problem in this relationship. It's like dealing with a ticking time bomb, he said, as he blamed me for being the reason behind his entire drama. He continued, No wonder our kids are better off without you. You're unfit to be a mother. You're delusional if you think anyone will believe your side of the story. I was so mad and he just kept going. Everyone knows you're the crazy one. I've got the upper hand here. You're just a drama queen trying to play the victim card. I had enough when he said, throw another fit. That's all you're good at. Can't handle your emotions, huh? He was intentionally trying to make me feel like I was losing my mind, gaslighting me with every word. And yes, I admit, amid the argument, I made a mistake. In a moment of anger, I threw away a few bottles. So my sis was there, right in the thick of it all, witnessing the fiery confrontation between me and my ex. I was kind of hoping she'd have my back, you know? Like maybe she'd testify on my behalf and show the truth to the world? But no, that's not how it went down. Instead, she did a total of 180 and supported my ex-husband. She had the nerve to claim he was this super nice guy while making me out to be the villain. And to top it off, she threw in this wild tale that I tried to harm him by throwing those glass bottles. My ex played the victim card like a pro. He kept on with this whole 
I deserve custody because she's unstable, shtick. It was like he had this whole script ready and my sis was reading straight from it. I was frustrated and hurt beyond words. I fought tooth and nail to prove my innocence, but it seemed like the odds were stacked against me. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't catch a break. It felt like I was in this never-ending loop of injustice. As a result, I lost custody. I had always been there for them, and now they were being taken away from me. It was the worst kind of pain a parent could ever experience. Also, I got arrested for the whole bottle-throwing incident. The authorities didn't take it lightly, and it landed me in a legal mess. I was charged with assault and reckless endangerment, which made my situation even more dire. The court found me guilty and sentenced me to six months in jail. Six long months away from my kids, away from everything I held dear. It was like a nightmare come true and I couldn't believe how my life had taken such a dark turn. I was stuck in this seemingly never-ending cycle of loss and pain. It was hard to see a way out and I felt like the world was against me. Once I finally got out of that dark and suffocating place, I was drowning in a sea of depression. I felt lost, broken and utterly defeated. In a desperate attempt to be a part of my kids' lives, I reached out to my ex-husband begging him to consider joint custody or at least give me one day a week with them. But you know what? He turned a deaf ear to my pleas. It was like he was enjoying having all the power, leaving me with nothing but heartache. My depression worsened and it felt like I was spiraling down a never-ending pit of despair. But luckily, I had a support system that stood by my side. My parents were my rock. They took me to therapy. Their love and support kept me going when I felt like giving up. On the other hand, my sister seemed to be living her best life, having a blast with her newfound wealth. It stung to see her living carefree while I was drowning in pain and sorrow. I couldn't help but wonder how she suddenly came into all that money. Deep down, I knew it was likely tied to her involvement in the whole mess with my ex-husband. Life seemed unfair and I was struggling to find my footing again. But you know what they say. When you hit rock bottom, the only way to go is up. After what felt like forever in the dumps, I finally started to pick myself up. It wasn't easy, but hey, life's all about taking baby steps towards a brighter future. Slowly but surely, I saw a glimmer of hope shining through. Then bam, out of the blue, my sister shows up at my doorstep, all apologetic and wanting to make amends. I got to admit, it was tough to see her there knowing all the crap she put me through. Turns out my ex-husband, the master manipulator, had cut ties with her. Guess she was no longer useful in his twisted game. Karma's got a funny way of biting back, huh? So now my sister's in a real pickle, broke with no place to crash. You can't help but think, what goes around comes around. My parents, on the other hand, were like, Nah, we ain't taking her back. Not after what she pulled on you, kiddo. But here's where I had an idea. I mean, what if there's a silver lining in all this mess? I decided to give her a shot at redemption, but with a condition. Spill the beans, girl. If she wanted to patch things up, she had to come clean for once in her life. No more lies, no more covering up for Mr. Cheetah. It was time for her to spill the tea and tell the truth about everything that went down. Update one. So I had this crazy idea to make amends with my sis and I threw it out there. She wasn't too keen on the whole truth spilling thing, but I knew how to work my magic. I told her, listen, sis, I'll talk to the folks and get them to give you your inheritance. You'll be set for life. No more broke days. Guess what? She couldn't resist that tempting offer. We have decided to head to court tomorrow. Fingers are crossed for some luck. Update 2. I walked into that courtroom ready to spill the tea and set the record straight. And you know what? It worked like a charm. I won back my kids, got child support in the bag, and my ex-husband? He's going behind bars and paying a hefty fine. She showed the court the receipts, 
texts and all where my ex was begging her to lie for him and transferring money left and right. He's a terrible dad, no doubt, and that made it a piece of cake to expose him. Now here's the twist. My sis was supposed to face the music too for her false testimony, but I decided to be the bigger person and officially forgave her. She got three months though, but I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. The best part? I'm reuniting with my kids, and boy, are we happy. Update 3 Fast forward a month, and life couldn't be better. I'm on cloud nine, and my kids are beaming with joy. We're bonding again, and that's what truly matters. I had my parents give my sis her inheritance. No more drama. Please. But let's be real. I know her like the back of my hand. She'll probably burn through that money like wildfire. But you know what? I'm done with all that drama, and if she runs out of cash, she's on her own. I'm living life to the fullest with my precious little ones. It's all about happy moments and making memories together. So here's to a new chapter of happiness, away from all the chaos. NTA, no doubt about it. OP went through some seriously messed up stuff with the ex and sister. Losing custody of kids and getting arrested? That's rough, man. But hey, you didn't back down. You fought for her kids like a boss. And in the end, justice prevailed. She got her kids back. Total win. Forgiving your sister was big hearted, all in all. NTA. She deserves all the happiness with her kids. No question about it. NTA. This story is like some intense courtroom drama, man. Your struggles hit hard. Losing custody, dealing with lies and betrayal. Tough break. Seriously. Epic. Justice served, baby. Props to you for forgiving her and focusing on her kids. But like, be wary of her, please. Don't trust. Next story. I, 21 female, live with Amy, 21 female. We get along fine, but I wouldn't say we're great friends or anything. About two weeks ago, Amy started dating this guy. Josh, 20 male. Josh is apparently very allergic to peanuts. Amy says it's okay if he has some exposure to peanut dust or if peanuts are eaten in his proximity, but he'll become very ill and possibly die if he eats a peanut. Amy wants to be really careful about peanuts in the house now. I have a big tub of peanuts, maybe four inches wide and five inches tall. The two pound planters peanuts you find at the grocery store that I eat often as a snack, and Amy asked me to throw it away. I told her no. I'm happy to purchase a snack besides peanuts when I finish the tub. It's about half eaten. I'll probably finish it in about two months. I'm not like married to peanuts or anything, but I'm not going to throw away perfectly good food. I was raised without enough food on the table sometimes, and I absolutely will not waste a bunch of food. I know it's not the biggest deal, but it's a principal thing for me. Now, if it was my roommate who was allergic to peanuts, I would definitely consider it. But my roommate's boyfriend of two weeks who does not pay rent here is not a valid reason for me to waste food. I always wipe down the counter after I eat anyway, so I will keep traces of peanuts away from Josh, even though he's okay to come into slight contact with it. If he is concerned about contact with peanuts, he does not have to come over much for the next two months. Again, after that, I'll buy a different snack. But until then, I'm going to keep eating my peanuts and cleaning up after I do so. The main reason why I won't give my peanuts to someone else is for those reasons. I feel that given Josh's newness and the fact that he doesn't live here, I have a right to eat peanuts if I want to, and if I already own them. Amy is really angry that I won't get rid of the peanuts. I've talked with my friends, and they're split. Some say I'm the a-hole because I can't help that he's allergic to peanuts, and I'm creating an environment that may make him uncomfortable. My other friends say I'm not the a-hole because it's my house. My tub of peanuts is older than Amy and Josh's relationship. And I could get rid of my peanuts only for them to break up. I wanted to get more opinions on this as I don't want to be a major a-hole, but I'm okay with slightly inconveniencing Amy for the sake of not wasting food. So 
AITA, edit. They broke up nine days after I posted this. I guess that solves it, <laughs> lol. Thanks everyone for your judgments. Info, can't you just keep them in your room and not eat in common spaces? Since he's not a resident and the relationship is so fresh, I'd say NTA. They've even admitted it isn't a serious issue unless he eats them. Should be fine. I have two teens with nut allergies that are similar. As long as they aren't eating them, they're okay. Your roommate is overreacting to this situation. NTA, I'm on the same level of allergic to Brazil nuts. Me handling them is dangerous because of the oil. Definitely not eating them. And it'd be absolutely bonkers for me to demand that others in my own household never eat them. Our dishes are washed with hot water and soap, as are our hands and counters. I imagine yours are, too. Unless Josh makes a habit of sucking random people's fingers, I think your roommate is being overly sensitive. NTA. Boyfriend of two weeks? Yeah, no, I wouldn't change my diet for my roommate's brand new bow either. You live there. He doesn't. He needs to be aware of the presence of peanuts. Does he expect his friends and extended family to give up peanuts too? Next story. I just job hopped and landed a job at a frankly ridiculous salary. I went from making 120000 doing software engineering to 310000 in the senior systems engineering role, plus a sign-on bonus and stock options. It's at a startup company that's high risk, high reward, so it's a gamble if the company will still exist in a few years, but for now, it's great. I decided I didn't want to change my lifestyle at all since the money's probably temporary. So I kept on spending like always and just put all the extra money into maxing out my retirement savings and paying down my house. I've also been in a relationship with my boyfriend Jason for about a year and a half. He makes 90000 so he's doing really well himself. We're both in a low cost of living rural area and he's still making a lot more than average here. But after I got the new job, he started being really critical of how I spend or don't. Like, I wanted to build a sunroom gazebo for my house, so I went to the construction material recycling and reuse center to buy some lumber and some vintage windows to make it. Woodworking and DIY is genuinely a hobby of mine, but my boyfriend made fun of me for still going to the junkyard to build the gazebo even when I could afford to hire a contractor. But the bigger fight has been about a vacation. We'd planned to do a road trip in the summer, camping most of the way and staying in hotels a night or two a week to shower and stay near cities we visit. But after I got the new job, he wanted to stay in hotels every night. I was kind of stressed about that because I don't want to start spending like I'll always have this kind of cash flow and have that lifestyle creep since I know it might not last. And I don't want to feel disappointed or struggle when I have to scale back my spending. So it was really important to me to just put away whatever extra money that's temporarily coming through for the future. But my boyfriend told me I was being ridiculous, wanting to sleep on the ground on our vacation when I was making so much. I said I love camping. I was looking forward to all the camping and hiking and climbing we'd planned. And he just kind of snapped at me saying that I seem to love everything that's cheap or free. And it's kind of entitled, honestly. I said if anyone's acting entitled, it's honestly him. When he just wanted me to pay for something, he didn't even ask if I wanted. Didn't offer to split the cost or anything. It's like he just saw me making more and decided he wanted to spend it. We had this big fight where he said I was all me, 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 only caring about my house and my retirement and how I'd spend thousands a month paying my mortgage faster than I needed to, but wouldn't even do the minimum to make our vacation nice. AITA for wanting to use the money coming in from a new job to save for the future? 
NTA. It's your job, your money, and pretty rude for your boyfriend to decide how you should spend it. If he wants to be a big spender, he should find a job where he makes more. You aren't all me, 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 because you are literally looking forward to a trip where you'd be spending a lot of close time with him. For you, it's about the simple things. For him, it's about money, your money. I'm a big advocate of enjoying life now because we never know when we won't get another tomorrow. But it sounds like you are enjoying your life without needing to throw around tons of money and be wasteful. So good on you. You and your partner have such different values and interests. Wouldn't you prefer to be with someone who would help you build your junkyard gazebo? Or at least cheer you on while you did it and be happy taking a road trip camping holiday with you. Is he that guy? NTA. Next story. My dad is estranged from most of his family because when I was seven, he and my mom took in mom's nephew, who is now my brother and their son. My parents had me and my two sisters. My brother was an only kid and his mother was a piece of shit who treated him terribly. My brother is white, dad is black, mom is white and my sisters and I are dark skinned. But we are biracial, obviously. For some reason, dad's family didn't want him to take in a white boy and they became estranged over time. We didn't see them for years, but recently an aunt contacted me and my sisters saying my grandparents wanted to see us because they are in bad health and stuff. Dad said no to seeing them, but my brother encouraged us to go. It became clear very early on that nobody in the family had changed their minds on our brother. They actually corrected us when we called him that the first day. So I started to make a point of saying brother instead of his name, and I made sure that everyone knew that he's the most like dad out of all of us kids. Because it's true, he is. The girls and I take after mom, but my brother and dad, outside of skin color, are like personality twins and even how they carry themselves is uncanny. I knew it bothered my dad's family, specifically the grandparents, and after a few once a week visits, the family called me out for bringing that up around sick old people. I told them they should be glad I came back at all because they already disrespected our family. They say I'm acting like a kid and not a 26-year-old man. I told them they acted like kids hating a 7-year-old who needed a family and got one in us. My sisters and I decided after the arguing to just not go back. My brother said he doesn't want to be the reason, but we assured him it's about them, not him that we're family and nobody gets to deny that or make us feel bad about it. Some more contact was made, uh, my extended family who said I should apologize before it's too late, and they blamed me and how I acted for the grandparents getting worse. AITA? NTA, they wanted to be in your life. They respect your life. That includes your brother. It's not easy to stand up against family, especially when... They're all telling you that you're wrong, but you've done the right thing. I used to work with a lot of kids who are in or have been taken out of nasty homes. Even children who are lucky enough to be taken in by other family members who love them unconditionally can grow up with that feeling that they don't really belong or fear of being rejected. Often, they don't even realize it until something goes wrong. NTA, racism against anyone who is white is not unheard of or even a new thing. It is just sad that racism of any kind exists at all. As for how you treated your elderly relatives, you are correct in knowing that they were the ones who were unreasonable to a child. If they did not know better as adults then, they should have at least learned by now. If not, that is not your fault. It is theirs. To top that off, other relatives are trying to bully you and your family because you keep speaking the truth. That is absolutely messed up on their part. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.